You can create your own marble surfaces directly over wood using epoxy. We're gonna show you in this video how we install the backsplash, the faucet holes, how we finish everything like a pro, all the installation tips and tricks. Visit us anytime at stonecoatcountertops.com. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. Our epoxy rocks, Stone Coat Countertops. Remember, when you subscribe to our channel, click on the red subscribe button and be sure to ring the bell so you get notified every time we have a new video. Thanks again. Okay, we're doing a vanity replace right now. Let's get started. Uh, what we got here is we got red guard and then we have the perimeter painted black so you don't get any reflections onto that porcelain sink of the red guard. I always like to dry fit everything to make sure you got the right fit. So I'll just set it up here before I run any silicone or glue and just dry fit it and make sure we got a nice clean fit. These sinks are fun. It's called an infinity edge. The reason we call it that is because you cannot see the rim of the sink. It's a really clean install. I'm gonna drill a hole in this countertop and install the faucet before we install so that it makes plumbing that faucet really simple. And then we'll install the backsplash. I'm gonna give you a pro tip on how to protect your counters when you drill your faucet holes or mount your sink. Masonite is a great option that you can lay on either side of the sink. I just have some scrap masonite, and if I was gonna lift this sink and install it that way, I could put a two by four, run my clamp right through the sink hole before it's plumbed, clamp it up to my two by four, and let that set while I put in my screw strips. Another option is if you're gonna drill your hole and you don't wanna risk any damage to that sink, you can simply use masonite cover that sinkhole, drill your hole out. That also stops the dust from going in your fresh silicone and you can uh, protect that sink while you drill. When I drill out my faucet hole, it's a good idea to run a vacuum at the same time to capture any dust and makes cleanup a breeze. When we cut out that old silicone, you're gonna wanna clean that with an acetone. That does a real good job of cleaning off all that old residue. Make a nice clean surface to adhere to that new countertop. So when I caulk the perimeter, I'm just gonna to stay towards the outside so that it doesn't squish back into my vanity. And if it does, just simply use a little acetone and a rag and it'll clean that up nice for you. Okay, I'm gonna just put a few blobs of silicone so that it'll also adhere with glues and screws. Boom. Yeah. Let's install the backsplash. There's a few simple steps to do when you're creating backsplash to get a perfect fit every time. We're gonna go underneath an existing mirror. We're gonna hang that first. That will give us the dimension that we need to cut our backsplash. Our measurement is four and a sixteenth all the way across. That's perfect. We don't have to adjust that mirror. I'm gonna cut my backsplash four inches to give me a sixteenth inch of play and that'll be a nice clean look. I'm gonna go 67 and a quarter. That's gonna hide that mess. Also, a pro tip, do your back piece first and then do your side splash. I like that return going into the back wall as opposed to side splash and then back piece. That's a better way to install. It's just a cleaner overall look. Another pro tip, to remember your measurements, write them down or use your cell phone and take a picture. You can write your measurements on a roll of tape and you can always peel that tape, tear that off and you have a fresh note card all the time. Measure twice. Cut once. I like to cut inside my trailer whenever possible. It avoids having to put tarps and canvases out and it's winter time here in Oregon. So if I had inclement weather, I have a permanent canopy set up so I can do a couple backsplash cuts. When we pour the backsplash, we do it oversized. We get a perfect fit when we're on site because we can trim it to size. And when we trim it to size, it gives us a factory edge that has no epoxy on that bottom edge, so it fits super tight. I'm just using a regular fine tooth saw blade on my saw made for wood cutting. That cuts through the epoxy really well. I don't need to tape it off. As long as you have a nice sharp fine tooth blade, you get really nice cuts. Are you guys sick of my pro tips? Let me know in the comments below. Am I overusing that? If so, let me know, I'll shut up. 67 and a quarter is our measurement. I like to transfer it to blue tape on my piece because it's hard to see pencil lines on a finished top. We're gonna go install this piece. I'll bring up my side splash so we can get a perfect measurement on that as well. <laughs> 
Okay, I'm gonna dry fit the backsplash before we install it. Make sure it fits and then add your glue. That's a really good fit. What I like to do is put my blobs of silicone on the actual wall in this case, because I'm gonna fit behind the faucet and I don't wanna move my, uh, my backsplash and have it drip on my finished counter. Silicone's a great way to adhere your backsplash to the wall, but we're gonna do a beauty bead. We're gonna do that where the paint line meets our backsplash, and we're gonna use paintable caulking in that case. This silicone is not paintable. When I have my silicone on site, I'll stick it in my trash bucket so that anything that leaks out will go into my trash bucket and not on the finished floor where you step in it and track it throughout the house. That would be messy. So what I like to do on my side splash is I know this is my finished edge, not this edge. So I'm gonna put my finished edge against my installed splash and I'm gonna give myself a pencil line. I'm gonna bring my backsplash back from that radius just slightly and that's where I'm going to cut it. I transferred my line, I got my blue tape so I could see my line. I confirm I'm cutting the correct edge off my backsplash and we'll go ahead and make the cut. Another reason I like to make bigger backsplash is because now I have a sample piece. So I can make this a nice clean cut. Now I have a nice piece of backsplash as a sample. And also I have a color sample to show a matte finish. It's also a great way to bring it to the office, tell all your friends you made it, and introduce them to Stone Coat Countertops. Sharing is caring, share the video. Watch the grain now. You can see how the grain goes up and follows that backsplash. We'll adhere that to the wall and we'll get ready to do the finishing touches. Because I don't need to slide this piece behind a faucet, I can just add my silicone to the side splash and it makes the install a little bit easier. Okay, we're gonna wipe any of the remaining dust off the surface of the countertop and then I'm gonna mask it off in a little tight joint. I want about an eighth of an inch joint to run a clear bead of silicone and this resembles set on top granite backsplash. This is how I used to install granite and it resembles that look of natural stone as opposed to that cove integrated backsplash look that you get with Formica. That's the nice thing about building your own backsplash. Take your time when you're masking your backsplash. Nice tight tape lines create a beautiful professional finish. There you go. So where I couldn't run my finger with my actual caulking gun, I'm gonna come back and clean that up right now. I'm gonna use the excess to drag it up this 90 degree line here too. Okay, I'm gonna to tool it one more time just to make it really tight. The best tool for finishing your caulking is right there on your hand. All the other tools don't compare. Whatever caulking you're gonna use that meets the actual sheetrock in your finished wall, make sure it says paintable. Now that I have everything caulked out, it's time to remove the tape. Pro tip, you don't wanna let the caulking begin to set up before peeling the blue tape. You want to wait 24 hours before running water in your sink. The reason you want to do that is because you don't want to transfer any moisture onto that silicone. If you look at our joints, they're nice and tight. It looks super professional. I love the matte finish. This vanity came out awesome. Mm, that's high quality H2O right there. The thing I like about our cleaner is it makes everything really, really slick and smooth, but it doesn't mess with the sheen and leave an oily residue. I've left this matte finish. It makes it feel really slick, but it doesn't add oil or uh, uh, streaks to it. Hey guys, here's a pro tip. Leave your workspace more clean than it was when you got there. Make sure it's tidy, the surfaces are wiped down, everything smells fresh. That's how you go from good to great. The difference is about that much.
Thanks for watching, guys. Our epoxy rocks, Stone Coat Countertops. Hey, visit us anytime at StoneCoatCountertops.com. Call anytime for free project support. And until next time from Stone Coat Countertops, you got this. We'll see you soon.